Interesting, provocative title for this episode. What I don't like about the love languages. Now, let's pull back because some of you might have never even heard of the love languages. Well, it is a book popularized many years ago, probably over 20 years ago by Gary Chapman, and it's called The Five Love Languages. It is now an entire series platform. It's gone to the moon essentially within the context of what you can do with the book platform, being an entrepreneur and a speaker. And everybody considers the gold standard. And in many ways, it is a gold standard, but I believe the context of the book offers a premise that often can be misleading. Because I remember reading this book back in like 2014, 2015, and I randomly heard about it on The Ellen Show. Someone on there was talking about it, and I was like, huh, what's that book? And I read it, I was like, wow, this book has all the answers. It's like this pathway to understand what's missing. But the reality is, it often doesn't always work. It often always doesn't apply in the way the book sells it. And it's often written for a, a time when in period where maybe marriage and relationships were a little bit easier to work through. But what I want to point to is why I don't like it. Because it counts on this idea that someone else is responsible for you feeling love. Now, this isn't my thought or my teaching, but I've subscribed to Hell Runkle, who wrote Scream Free Parenting and Scream Free Marriage. And I've subscribed to his belief that people don't have responsibility for you. They don't have responsibility for your happiness. They have responsibility to you to be the best version of who they are, but not responsibility for you. And the love language's premise is that you are responsible for making that person feel loved. And oftentimes, depending on someone's story, depending on a dad that maybe never felt loved or a woman that never felt loved growing up, sometimes that doesn't always work because what you put in doesn't actually stay. Maybe there's a hole in it and you're, it's not your job to fill the hole, but you keep throwing it in there, it doesn't work. What I want to point towards is what I do like about the leveling, which is why I even use them in my coaching. And I want to reveal this process to help you understand something maybe in your life. So if you go to the Love Languages website, Google it, Love Languages, there's a test. Take the test. It'll tell you in the order of these five love languages. They're physical touch, quality time, acts of service, gifts, and words of affirmation. Those have a sequence. Now, they're often programmed and in the order of naturally of which one you were missing growing up is generally the one you want the most. In this moment... What you're looking for is someone else, now that I brought it up, maybe you've already tried this, is you're looking for someone else to fill these in the order. But the problem with that is, again, I just said it doesn't always work the way the book sells it. But, here's a but. Here's the point of this episode. I want you to realize that there is a process to use them that is, in my opinion, the right way. So take your love languages test and reverse engineer them. I'm a believer that those five love languages, you're not gonna be able to get 100% every day, seven days a week, but you should have a method to fill those tanks all on your own. You should have an ability to enter that tank and love yourself without ever having another person there. For example, quality time, sometimes I am just going for lunch to Jersey Mike's and having the quality time of my thoughts, being away from the home, quality thoughts, of, quality time of being away from anything, and to me that, is showing love and appreciation for the life I've built, for the commitments, the sacrifices that I've done. And I'm doing that with only myself. Now that almost might be sad that you're like, oh man, he goes to lunch by himself, but I'm not. I'm always meeting new people, running in, having conversations. I've even had a three minute life coaching session with the guy at Jersey Mike's. Moments can happen anywhere. But the idea is being accountable to those moments and realizing you have a capacity to realize and fill those your own. And I'll reframe it of why there is a barrier where they do work and where they don't. I always like to explain marriage and the idea of it is a Thanksgiving dinner. That you have turkey, stuffing, and mashed potatoes on that plate. And they're all seasoned perfectly, cooked perfectly, and they all taste really good. But there's one thing that would make all three of those better. Gravy. Gravy, done right, makes everything better. Those things in the plate, they're already a great meal. Those things right in the plate are your five love languages that you're learning to live and focus on on yourself. Realizing that, realizing 
that those areas are capabilities and also patterns. When you answer this question in yourself, you're going to realize a lot of your daily patterns are trying to get these things met from other people. And once you realize that, then you can interrupt it and create new patterns. And that's a whole nother episode. What I want you to realize is by being the turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes on the plate for yourself, learning to love and meet those three requirements for a good Thanksgiving meal all on your own using these five love languages template, you create a foundation where the world becomes bonus. Because the reverse of that is sometimes in that love language is, can sell this idea that a woman might be in a desert and you are the water that gives your life. You can't always be there to give someone water. A desert doesn't always last. And you being responsible for the person delivering that water is never going to get that person out of the desert. They have to accept responsibility for traveling outside of that desert to find their own water source. And an analogy that I just used in another session that I was in was you want to be in a jungle where life is abundant and it rains and you start dancing. Because it's just extra. It's overflowing. The jungle's already wet, but it's raining and there's just water running everywhere. You want that moment where everything is abundant. Because in that abundance is where joy, sex, bliss, awesomeness, excitement, all of those exist. And they exist in a place where it's bonus. You're not getting a drink of water after a parched walk through the desert. You're getting additional water in an already abundant ecosystem. Think about how you can take the love languages test, reverse engineer it, take some accountability in your life, and take and what could be the very first step to be responsible for your own happiness and responsible for loving yourself before you ever ask anybody externally to try to love you. This is a key part of my coaching. This is the key part of the first two weeks where I help you identify where you are because how you desire love externally will give me a lot of indicators of how you got to where you are today. That's all I have for you today. And we'll be back again to close out the week tomorrow.